Heavenly Father, we ask that you would come and speak your word to us. That we would hear your word and it would bear fruit in our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Please be seated. And as you're being seated, please turn with me to Psalm 96, which is page 499 in the Blue Pew Bibles. Psalm 96, page 499. There is a punk rock group called Hoobastank uh, that has a song called Same Direction that goes like this. Whenever I step outside, somebody claims to see the light. It seems to me that all of us have lost our patience because everyone thinks they're right and nobody thinks that there just might be more than one road to our final destination. But I'm never going to know if I'm right or wrong, because all along, we've been going in the same direction. And I'm not sure which way to go, because all along, we've been going in the same direction. So why does there only have to be one correct philosophy? I don't want to go and follow you just to end up like one of them. And why are you always telling me what to believe? I'd like to think I can go my own way and meet you in the end. But I'm never going to know if I'm right or wrong because all along we've been going in the same direction. Without a doubt, one of the most popular objections to Christianity, to the Christian faith, could be summed up in one word. Exclusivity. Especially among Americans, this is one of the most common problems that people around us have with Christianity. The claim that Jesus is the only way to salvation. That he is the only way to eternal life with God. Isn't it simpler and nicer to just say with Hubastank that all religions are going the same direction and will meet in the end? How different this is from Psalm 96, verse 4 and 5. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, because all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. And this aversion to exclusive claims are so prevalent in our society is also quite common among confessing Christians. Many Christians have been so influenced by our culture on this point that even followers of Jesus believe that somehow all faiths are going the same direction and will meet in the end. So this morning we're going to deal with three common reasons why people object to the exclusive claims of the Bible to be the revelation of the only true God and that all people must trust in Jesus. So three ways, three common reasons people hold, those, hold that objection. Reason number one, some people object to the Bible's claims of exclusivity, to be the only revelation of the only God, is because they're ignorant of other religions. The popular claim these days is that all religions are essentially the same, that they all teach basically the same things. I was actually talking with someone earlier this year, riding in my car, and this was the specific charge leveled against Christianity that this person made, that all religions are basically the same, so who cares? What would you say if you were riding in your car and someone said that to you? What I said was, I just said, what's the same about them? At that point, he mumbled and fumbled and changed the subject and brought up another objection. And not to be rude to him, but the point was, he was spouting it off, but didn't actually know any way in which these religions that he was absolutely convinced were essentially the same. He had no first ability, no ability to, to say anything in which they were actually the same. Now, to give you an example, can we agree that Jesus being God himself, God incarnate, God who became a man... Can we agree that that's an essential part of the Christian faith? 
do you realize that no other religion in the world agrees with that? Except possibly Hinduism, but there have been, according to Hinduism, lots of incarnations of God. Very, very different. So an absolute fundamental essential of the Christian faith is rejected by every other religion in the world. Jesus is either God or he isn't. We can't pretend that all religions are essentially the same if they don't agree on essential parts of the Christian faith. Major world religions do not agree even on who Jesus is. They don't agree on the basics. They don't agree on who Jesus is, what God is like, if there even is a God, and if there, are, if there is a God, how many there are. They don't agree with what's wrong with the world or what can be or has been done about it. These seem to me to be fundamental, essential differences that major world religions cannot and do not agree on. These major, major faiths are fundamentally different and at best superficially similar. Okay, well, maybe they don't teach, they don't, maybe they don't all teach the same things, but surely they'll all lead to God. Really? Says who? Buddhism doesn't believe in a personal God at all, much less that reaching him is the ultimate goal. Occult religions are focused on connecting with and manipulating spirits, not reaching God. Saying all religions lead to God is about as logical as saying that all roads from Herndon lead to Philadelphia. No, they don't. And it's not helpful to pretend that they do. Roads from here lead all over the place. All religions are not the same, and they do not all lead to God. So straddling the fence on accepting Jesus because you think he's just one of many valid options simply won't work. Jesus is not one way. He's the way. But if Christianity is right, if God has revealed himself in the Bible and ultimately in the person of Jesus, does that mean that all other religions are completely wrong about everything? No. Being a Christian, you don't have to say that. Being a Christian, you can acknowledge that other religions have at least gotten pieces right. If Christianity is right, then it only makes sense that God has written into the hearts and minds of people all over the world and throughout time glimpses of his truth. Of course, there's some truth in all major faiths, including atheism. Very rarely will reasonable, thoughtful people follow a complete lie. But because there's some truth in it, people can be misled. Since there is a God who's revealed himself in the world, it's no wonder that glimpses of that truth have been caught and seen by people of other faiths. But while there may be glimpses of the truth in other faiths, it is only in Jesus that we meet God face to face. That revelation is not available anywhere else. All of the world's major faiths are fundamentally different and at best, superficially similar. Some people object to the Bible's claims to exclusivity because they simply don't understand what other religions teach. Second, some people object to the Bible's claims of exclusivity because they're unwilling to admit that someone could be wrong, at least about religion. What would you do if someone said it's arrogant to say you're right and others are wrong? I mean, all due respect, are you right about that? Are you right in your belief that it's arrogant to say your beliefs are right and others are wrong? Before coming here, I was working as a tennis coach um, outside Philadelphia. And one of my coworkers named Russell took me out to lunch specifically to explain to me that it is arrogant and dangerous to think that one view is right and the other is wrong. It's arrogant and even dangerous to try to convert someone to your beliefs. Allow me to put his, the whole purpose of this lunch in my own words. Allow me to convert you to my belief that no one should convert anyone to their beliefs. 
I mean no disrespect, but, but to just recognize that's what people say. I mean, he, was, he took me out to lunch specifically to teach me that I shouldn't try to convert anyone to my way of belief. Apparently, God doesn't see things this way. Look at verse 5. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. The Bible doesn't pull punches when it comes to talking about rival religions. All faiths do not worship the one true God. If one could be saved without trusting in Jesus, then why did Jesus come? If salvation were available without Jesus, why did he need to die? He came because salvation is not available any other way. And if God has truly revealed himself as we believe, then it's not arrogant or dangerous to share that God-given gift with other people. Actually, it's the most unloving thing possible not to share that gift with other people, even when that means challenging a person where they are wrong. Some people object to the Bible's claims to exclusivity because they don't understand other religions. And some people object because they're unwilling to admit that people could be wrong in their beliefs. And third, some people object to the Bible's claims to exclusivity because they misunderstand their ultimate problem. Tim Keller, author and pastor, writes of a conversation he once had. How can there be just one true faith, asked Blair, a 24-year-old woman living in Manhattan. It's arrogant to say your religion is superior and try to convert anyone else to it. Here's the kicker. Surely all the religions are equally good and valid for meeting the needs of their particular followers. I'm going to read that again. Surely all religions are equally good and valid for meeting the needs of their particular followers. So my question is, what are these needs of these particular followers? Some people seem to think that religion, faith in God, if you even believe in a God, some people seem to think that the whole point of religion is to make people happy. A good Belgian beer can do that. <laughs> if personal happiness is the whole point, there are other ways to accomplish that. Others seem to think that it's about inner peace. You can get deep inner peace by having a good long massage. It at least lasts as long as the massage does, maybe five minutes more. Others think that religion is about teaching people to be good, kind, and moral. Did you know that there are certain psychological disorders that can cause that in people? If that's all it is, there are other ways to accomplish it. But, if our ultimate problem is treason against the holiness of Almighty God because of our sin, then we need something far greater than just something to make us happy. Personal happiness, comfort, inner peace, morality, are all nice byproducts, or can be nice byproducts, of experiencing salvation from sin and the wrath of God. But it's not the actual problem that we face. Only Jesus, his birth, life, death, and resurrection, can possibly solve our ultimate problem. Some people object to the Bible's claim to exclusivity because they don't understand other religions. Some people, because they won't admit that people's beliefs could be wrong. And some people, because they misunderstand their ultimate problem and thus think that anything that makes them happy is sufficient. So, if I've accomplished my goal, we see that all religions cannot just be the same. Saying that it's unreasonable and I would say illogical just to try to say that everyone's beliefs are right even when they're mutually exclusive and completely contradictory. And that most religions radically misunderstand our ultimate problem. 
then I think a fair question is then what makes Christianity any better? What makes Jesus any better or different? A little bit of a cop-out. Time and adequacy of the preacher will not permit a complete answer to that. (laughs) But I offer one answer, one piece of the answer to that question. Christianity centers on the historical person named Jesus, who died physically on a cross at the hand of Roman executioners and rose bodily three days later from death. Skeptics have been trying for the last 2,000 years to come up with alternate explanations of what happened to Jesus and his body, and none have been as convincing as the fact that he physically died and physically rose again. No other answer makes sense of the empty tomb, the eyewitnesses' accounts of him being resurrected, the change that took place in the disciples almost overnight when they saw him, the fact that eyewitnesses were willing to die martyrs' deaths because they claimed to have seen him alive again, or the fact that for the past 2,000 years, men, women, and children have encountered the risen Jesus and know his power and his presence and his purpose for their lives. God has revealed himself in the person of Jesus, who is God himself, God incarnate, who, as our liturgy will just remind us in a couple minutes, who shared our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to God. Because Jesus did what he did during his life, and the fact that he died, but just simply wouldn't stay dead, That he rose again on the third day in actual physical history gives credibility to his teachings that he alone is God and that no one comes to the Father except through him. So because the God of the Bible is the only true God and that Jesus is the only way to salvation, then what are we to do? And I think our psalm gives us two very clear answers. Look at verse 7. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name, bring an offering and come into His courts, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness, tremble before Him all the earth. One essential response to this one and only true God is worship. Worship the Lord who has done these marvelous things. And second is evangelism. Sharing that with other people that don't know Jesus. Look at verse 10. Hear the charge of verse 10. Because not all religions are the same and because we know that the ultimate problem for all of us can only be solved through what Jesus has done, it is unloving not to share that. Hear the charge in verse 10. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. And verse 3, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. We need to do this with grace, respect, and gentleness, but we need to do it. The loving action towards others is not to keep this to ourselves because we think it might be awkward. If this is true, the only loving response would be to share that with people that don't already know Jesus. It would be unloving not to. The God of the Bible is not one valid option among many. In fact, the only way to love and worship God correctly is through faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We must worship Him and Him alone, and we must graciously, respectfully, and gently call others to do the same. Psalm 96, verse 1. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. 
Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Tell of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Amen.